Hello and welcome to the Back Nine Report. Every week, Fred Almeida and I check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. Hey, we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. Hey, Fred, hi, how are you this week? Hey, Carlos, uh, fantastic. Had a really good weekend. Got to watch my Buckeyes beat Penn State. Uh, we're cruising. We're waiting now for Michigan. We're all set now. Ohio State and Michigan game coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's November. The, the college season is starting to wind down a little bit. Really getting in the meat of the season with the big, big game. <coughs> Excuse me, with the, with the big games. We had a beautiful day here today. I was telling you, 66 degrees here today. Very little wind, sunny. Went over and played uh, played nine holes this afternoon with my grandson. Beautiful, beautiful day. Um, just uh, really good stuff going on up here, Carlos. Uh, and I uh, can't wait. Hey, you know, uh, you've been talking about this young girl out of Thailand for a while. And we've been calling her name at different tournaments and things like that. And she's all the rage right now. She kind of just kind of, kind of quietly snuck up there. All of a sudden, there's a new number one in town. Yes, there is. And we were just talking about Lydia Cole last week and all the great things that she's been doing. But this is a player that has been maybe falling under the radar, even though she's had a solid season. But let's talk about side player Asaya Tsitiko. She has become the world's number one for the first time. She's just 19 years old after she just finished sixth in the BMW Ladies Championship. You know, that achievement puts her in exclusive company alongside the one that we were talking about last week, Lydia Ko, as the only other player to reach the summit of the world rankings before turning 20. Sithical achieved that feat now just aged 19 years, 8 months, and 11 days. But, hey, Lydia did it when she was 17 in 2015. So two years, but still great achievement to do it under 20 years old. The only two ever to do it. Now, she has replaced Yin Young Ko at the top, and she's super happy about this. But Yin Young Ko had been there for uh, a long time. She has done it four times, 152 weeks that she has been number one. She's just a six away from Lorena Jorge's uh, 158. But now somebody else has taken over, and it's pretty cool. She's had an impressive season. It's not been superb. It's been solid. But she has two wins on the LPJ Tour and 14 top 10 finishes. That includes three in this year's majors, as her career has just taken off the charts. Uh, she arrived on the scene, and we've been talking about her since 2017. That's 15 year, five, uh, five years ago. So she was actually, back then, 14 years old. She made her debut on the LPGA Tour. It was February. She became the youngest player to win a tournament, a professional tournament. That was the LET's uh, cha silent championship she played at home. And uh, on the Ladies European Tour, five months later, she was 14 years, four months, and nine days when she did that. Now, she has also been the world number one amateur twice already. First, uh, originally, she reached it back in 2019. And uh, her reputation really has been enhanced in 2021 when she followed that incredible season. She was named LET Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year. So, Fred, in reaching number one, she becomes the 16th player to achieve the honor and the second from Thailand after Adia Yutanarin. She held the position from June 2017 to June 2019. And he's only the second player to do it so in her rookie year after Sun Yung Park did it in 2017. Yeah, uh, amazing numbers, Carlos. And you just mentioned that uh, she finished sixth in the last tournament at the BMW Championship. Uh, and But she held the 54-hole lead. She was in a position to win that tournament. She struggled on Sunday, uh, uh, shot a 74, ended up falling down to sixth. Of course, Lydia Ko won that, that championship. And, you know, there is a lot of parallels between Fittical and Lydia Ko. As you mentioned, she won that, uh, that championship down there, the Ladies European. Um, you know, Lydia Ko won at a very young age, 15 years old, in, uh, down in New Zealand. And she won a, a couple events as an amateur. <clears throat> and and um, uh, Fiddy Cool uh, spent time as the number one ranked amateur in the world. And she started playing in some uh, uh, some professional events and doing quite well. 
Uh, and you also mentioned something that she had three top tens in the uh, in the majors this year. And I, I have that here. I wanted to pull that up. Uh, let's see. She had like a, um, uh, little, 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 I can't see it. My notes right this minute. But she was like a fourth in uh, in one. And she, like I say, three top tens in the Evian, the Women's PGA, and um, uh, the one other one. But uh, her two wins came this year at the um, JTBC Classic and also at the Walmart Northwest Arkansas Championship. So two wins, as you mentioned, a total of 14 top tens, and she's won over $2 million this year. Uh, she sits number two to Lydia in the race to the CME Globe, as well as now leading the Rolex ranking. Uh, she's and you a, a number of, one of the things that you like to watch of course is the rookie of the year and of course she leads that by a wide margin uh the Louise Suggs Rolex rookie of the year uh she's third in scoring average 69.4 uh she's fourth in a Rolex player of the year uh leads ranks first in birdies 375 so she's real aggressive um she had rounds in the 60s, leads that. She had a really low round uh, not too long ago. Um, she's just been tearing up the uh, LPGA Tour this year and doing it very quietly. Yes, we've, we've talked about her. We've seen her name, but nothing, nothing that really stands out and, and, uh, and, and, and really makes her, brings her home. Uh, yeah, in the, in the three majors, Carla, she was T8 in the women's PGA, T7 in the Evian, and um, I'm sorry, fourth in the women's PA, T8 in the Evian, T7 in the women's British Open. So that's that's pretty strong right there to be top 10 in three of the majors uh, on the women's side. So um, she's followed in the footsteps of Maria Jutanagarn. Of course, Maria Jutanagarn, Amoria, Maria, Maria Jutanagarn was there as well. Never reached number one, but, but is a great player out of Thailand. Carlos, we see these great players coming out of Thailand, uh, you know, uh, coming out of China, coming out of Japan, coming out of South Korea. Uh, the Asian women really, really come on strong when they when they hit the LPJ Tour. They do. And uh, one of the things that I was mentioning is uh, she has been consistent. That has been the word for her season already this year. Uh, it hasn't been anything flashy, even though she has won twice. But it tells you a lot that she has become only the fourth player in history to become world number one without winning a major. The other three, Lady Akko in 2015, Aimee Sato in 2010, and Lorena Ochoa. That's great company there that we're talking about. And uh, even though we're, she's still far away, this is her first uh, week at number one, but in, like you were saying, if you were drawing parallels between her and some of the others that you see on that list, she's up for a great career. I mean, and we have seen her since very young, uh, the potential that she has and that poise and that humbleness also that she has. She doesn't, she's not uh, overwhelmingly uh, arrogant or anything like that. She's actually very likable uh, and uh she has a great game, like travels well uh, all over. And again, she's not flashing its particular thing, but she's very consistent and reminds me a lot of an Inbe Park type of player that when she's consistent and when she keeps going and being on, I mean, I can expect her to keep challenging for being number one. Of course, In Young Ko has been the 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 state the stable one for all the past four years and just reach 152 weeks before this one at the top of the world Rolex World Golf Rankings. But she's been affected by a wrist injury. We know also that uh, Nelly Corda was, you know, she had, had to have surgery at the beginning of the year. So those are two players that had been battling for the world number one before Athaya Thetical did it finally. So it will be interesting to see when these other two players are finally healthy how she's going to be contending there. Now that Lydia Ko is there already as well, back on top of her game, it's going to be interesting next year to see how things are going to play out for it. I, I just can't wait. I think the women's game is just 
sorting out to have a 2023 that's going to be one to remember. Yeah, we're going to look forward to next year, but we also want to see these last two tournaments this year, plus the CME Tour Championship. So the women are in, the LPGA Tour is in Japan this week for the Toto, and then they have, they come back for the Pelicans women in uh, in Florida before the CME Tour Championship, uh, which has that $7 million purse. And you know who always plays well in that? Lydia Ko, Jin Young Ko, Lexi Thompson. They always play really well in that thing when there's big money on the line. So I don't look for Thede Cole to stay at number one that long. I really think Jin Young Ko will be playing the next couple of weeks. I really look for her to finish high and maybe retake that. Um, so, but Thede Cole could com- can, could contend next year with some more tournaments under her belt and some more top tens if she continues with this consistent play. Right now, a couple of numbers for you, Carlos. As you mentioned, Lorena Ochoa held the number one spot for 158 weeks. Jin Young Ko for 152. Yanni Sang for 109. NB Park 106. Lydia Ko's already done it for 104. So Lydia reaches the top spot, can do it for another year or two. She will surpass all of those ladies. But these numbers are a little bit misleading because they didn't start the uh, Rolex rankings until 2006. And Annika Sormstam was in her prime in the mid to late 90s and was wrapping up her career in 2006, 2007. She retired in 2008. So she was number one for like 61 weeks, but that was just when the uh, the Rolex rankings had started. So she would she would have probably uh, 300 weeks, you know, like Greg Norman or, or like Tiger or something, be way out ahead if they would have had that back when she was in her prime back in the 90s. So right now in the Rolex rankings, Carlos, Carlos, you've got Thede Cole at number one, Jin Young Ko very close at number two, Lydia Ko at number three, who's we know is playing very well and could easily jump up there. Nellie Corda, who's kind of still coming back from having time off, Minji Lee, Brooke Henderson, Lexi, Inji Chun, Nasa Haraoka, and Hu Yu Kim. So really good players there at the top. But well, the ones I'm watching are Lydia Ko and Afeya. Thede Cole. I think those are two to watch for number one over the next few weeks. Maybe if Jin Young comes back and plays well in the next couple, she can jump back up there. Yeah, I think Jin Young Ko, because of, you know, she had to retire from her comeback uh, tournament at BMW. I think she's still hurting from that wrist. I, it's unfortunate, but I think it won't be this year. She will be maybe back on top, but hey, that's what we talked about also last year, and she came out and won the CME, so she we can always plays well. Well. She always plays well in that thing. She does, and a win from her and any of those tournaments just will bring her back to number one, or a win by Lydia Cole would also propel, propel her to number one, but anyway, the great thing about this is we have a great at least four players to watch, maybe next year, they're dangling at number one, trying to see who's going to be it. But definitely, Afaya Fitical is here to stay. She'll be challenging them. And uh, I can't wait to see, man. This is going to be an incredible 2023 in the LPGA. I agree 100%, Carlos. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. It's always our pleasure to bring you the latest in golf news and information. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you can always receive the notifications right there when we upload a video. Thank you for joining us.